out these pictures on uh, our guest website? I, they, the they nebula images and the hydrogen alpha images and the star cluster images. These wow. are like, as Wolf Blitzer would say about the women of the Rutgers basketball team, those amazing women of Rutgers, uh, these are actually amazing pictures. <laughs> Because if we all remember, the Rutgers women's basketball team actually lost in the NC2A finals to the real amazing women, the Tennessee uh, volunteers who actually beat them. But these are amazing images. There's a great story I was reading about this village, astronomy village, called Deerlick Astronomy Village. The Disassociated Press ran this uh, on October 28th, and it was the brainchild of our guest, Chris Hetledge, who is an amateur astrophotographer and co-founder of Deerlick Astronomy Village. Mr. Hetledge, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I was reading this story, and I was like, th th there's something just really cool about this this concept and like-minded people getting together and just sharing in uh, their passion and their hobby, and apparently this was a five-year plan that you thought would be uh, accomplished, but actually things happened a lot quicker. Tell us uh, tell us about the, the concept for uh, Deerlick Astronomy Village and uh, how come it got so successful so quick. Well, sure, thanks. Um, yeah, it's actually a fairly interesting project. Uh, a group of friends of mine uh, live in Atlanta, big city lights, have a very hard time, uh, you know, visually seeing stars or, or doing any type of photography, which is what I enjoy doing. Um, so we set out to find some property out in the middle of nowhere, uh, central Georgia, uh, where the skies are, are fairly dark. Um, and we couldn't really find anything of a significant size of, you know, an acre or two is what we were looking for. All we found is large plots of land, an acre, a hundred acres or so. So we decided to subdivide the property and see who was interested in possibly going in and purchasing a lot of land. And now what we have is a, is a real community. Like you said, it's a group of guys that all, you know, get together and have a shared interest in astronomy. It's kind of cool. Is it a full-time community or is it like the place you go on the weekends? Most uh, most of the folks out here are, are weekend only uh, people, and we come out when the skies are clear, when it's uh, you know the, the moon's not up, and when there's a uh, you know good chance of, of actually seeing something interesting. Wow! Now, uh, yeah. do you guys have water? Because I know that's a little bit of a problem down there right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, all of us have wells, uh, so we dig down deep. We don't have to share our water with Alabama or Florida. Now, you have like is it? Do I have this correct? There were like seventeen. Uh, lots that you put on the market, like about two acres or so a piece, and sold out in less than two years. And you also have like a common area where people who aren't property owners can go and check out the uh, the sky. It's actually there's actually three parts of the community. There's a large uh, ten acre field that people can come out and camp for the weekends, bring their telescopes, just camp out of their car or, or pitch a tent. And we also have large star parties. A couple weeks ago, we had about 150 people out on our field. Uh, camping out, uh, using their telescopes and, and cameras and taking pictures and such. Um, we also lease lots, which are with folks that just want to maybe build a small observatory on a small piece of land and, and uh, sort of dream, build their dream observatory just for uh, weekend getaways. And then we have these larger lots, which are two-acre lots, where people are building cabins and, and larger observatories. Um, those are those are popping up uh, as well. And like you said, we sold out all 16 lots. and actually have decided to develop another 10 lots in our community because the popularity has been so so strong. Nice. The uh, website actually, is deerlickgroup.com, uh, right? I'm sorry? Deerlickgroup.com is the website? Deerlickgroup.com, yep. Hoping maybe now, uh, Dennis Kucinich might come out and hang out and look up and see find some <laughs> UFOs maybe someday. <laughs> hey, a lot of... A lot. A lot of other people have also said there's something else out there. I mean, I'm not going to try and discredit Buzz Aldrin or uh, oh, sure. uh, Story Musgrave and uh, a lot of others. I, I got a lot of buddies that are in the astronaut program, and uh, uh -huh. you know, these are people with uh, you know three degrees. They speak 19 languages. Uh, you know, real modern day pioneers, and you know, they, they're trying to make this Dennis Kucinich, uh, you know, look like he's some kind of a nut, which he can do on his own without having to talk about <laughs> UFOs. Uh, if, if anything, he's consistent, but. Uh, you know, wh what is it about astronomy? I mean, I, every night <clears throat> I'm outside and I'm looking up. And when my astronaut buddies are over, they say, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so, and, you know, that's this. And, and it's kind of cool to look at. Um, but what what is it about astronomy that gets people to want to set up their own village and just hang out and look at the stars? Well, I think part of it is just, you know, having a bunch of folks that have a common interest in something. And when you get people together uh, like this, and, and typically astronomers 
uh, amateur astronomers will go out all by themselves in a field by themselves or in their backyard by themselves. And so I think it was there was really a demand for for bringing like-minded people together, and I think that's probably been the strongest uh, thing. Uh, but there's so much to see out there, and when you start pointing some of this, some of these high-tech telescopes that are out there these days, and um, you know the camera technology that's out there to photograph these deep space objects, um, it's just absolutely amazing what we see out there. And, and every weekend is really an experience. Um, you know, I've seen, I, I had an opportunity to see a lot of cool images from uh, JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, in uh, Pasadena, because a lot of uh, the backdrops that we used in my TV series Babylon Five were actual images provided to us by JPL. Amazing, isn't it? This is incredible what's really out there to see. You, you look at them and you almost go, and I'm looking at your website, uh, Hetledge, H-E-T-L-A-G-E dot com, and I'm looking at like these nebula images, and they they look so uh, 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 amazing that they almost look fake. Yeah, and, and those are actually fairly large objects in the sky. It's just that they're so dim. Most of those are larger in, you know, visual size, okay, than the moon. But if but they're just so dim, you know, you just can't see them, and it takes a a long you know exposure photograph like that, eight ten hours long to really capture that much of the object. Eight or ten hour long exposure for one photo? Uh, some of those are are three or four night efforts. Really? <laughs> I got I got about fifteen seconds left, Mister Hetledge. Are we alone? <laughs> I don't think. Is so. there some? I don't <laughs> I'm either. Still I think it's awfully. Pompous of us to consider ourselves to be the only intelligent life on uh, in the universe. And which is bigger, a universe or a galaxy? Oh, well, the universe has millions and billions of galaxies. Wow. Anyway, I think it's a great. It's just a great story. Deer Lick Astronomy Village. The website is deerlickgroup.com, or you can check out Chris Hetledge's website, Hetledge H E T L A G E dot com, for some uh, some pretty cool photos. I appreciate your time and uh, continued success down there. Jerry Doyle, stick with me. This is the Jerry Doyle Show. <laughs> Do you have a telescope? Uh, no, I don't. Chuck, you got one? No, I'm uh, telescopeless. Uh-huh. This guy, he said 8 to 10 hours to take a photo. Some photos take days. How is that possible? Don't you just, like, push the... I'm very familiar with the kind that come in the, the little plastic, you know, you unwrap it and you click it and then you send it and they give you the pictures back. I'm not very hip on technology, but... So what do you do? Like, you push a button and the, the lens... Yeah, it's stays like open a long for eight exposure. to ten hours. It's like taking a long exposure with a like a high tech camera, but you know it, it, it tracks the object across the night sky, you know, with like a little computer that's actually hooked up to the telescope. This sounds expensive. Oh yeah, <laughs> yep. <Big time. laughs> I bet you it is. And the telescopes. I mean, I'm looking at some of this. Bye, Mister Mister Hedledge. What a large telescope you have. These are <laughs> these are not just your entry level uh, pieces of equipment, are they? No, no. They're not from yeah. Radio Shack. But even with an entry-level telescope, I, I've seen the rings on Saturn before. And it's really, really small. It looks like just like a little a dot on the screen with a little circle on it. But, you know, it's there. You can see it. I mean, these nebula photos that he has, the California Nebula, Amazing. the Witch Head Nebula, Crescent. This is a, it, It's just... <sighs> Maybe Dennis Kucinich is right. <laughs> <laughs> the Orion Nebula. He sounded like a pretty reasonable guy. He didn't sure. sound like a you know he was he was a loony bin or something. He just thinks, eh, you know, there might be something out there. In this little village, by the way, property owners are vigilant about white light, which contracts pupils for about a half an hour and makes it tough to see anything in the dark. Homes only have outdoor lights that are a dim red, a color that doesn't affect the eyes the same way that white light does, and windows must be lined with foam board or other light-blocking materials to prevent rays from escaping. Pretty cool. 